Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, because I guess, yeah, I was part of Bromley, right? But now with this merge, I don't know all of you, for, so I assume that you don't know me, um, maybe. My name is Dawn Pollitt. I am, have been blessed for 10 years to Daniel Pollitt. Yeah, 10 years, right? Yeah, right? It's a long time. Uh, to be fair, my parents and my in-laws have been blessed for almost 40 years. So they were the same blessing, 6,000 couples in 1982. Um, I have three children. Uh, the oldest one is six, and the next one just turned five, and the little one is three and a half. Um, but yeah, I went to school for physics and mathematics, uh, and I was teaching secondary school physics, and now I'm giving the sermon. So. <laughs> the title of my sermon is Growing Into the Next Stage. Um, so I have a question. How many of you have ever read some Hundike or heard something and it just kind of, yeah, like, like, what, like what you were saying actually, right? Hits you like an arrow, right? And almost knocks you over. How many of you have had that experience? How many younger people have had that experience? Yeah, okay, right? So yeah, the inspiration for this sermon came from something like that. So True Mother you know, gave this message at the ceremony to offer our resolve to successfully dedicate the Chun Wangung. So that's going to be in 2023, right? So this was given on April 17th. And I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to tell you why and how I came about this uh, topic. And can I just say, I'm no expert on this topic at all. Actually, when I give sermons, it's because I feel like I, out of everybody, need to hear this the most. So I'm by no standard, actually, yeah, it's just basically something that's in my mind, and I'm going to kind of take you through that journey. So, quote, the advent of the true parents occurred on the 16th day of the third month by the lunar calendar in 1960. For God, however, sending the true parents was very painful, as it was like leaving his children on the bank of a river where they might fall in, and he could not take his eyes off them for even a moment. Two parents have spent the last 60 years in such an environment. As a result, so I bolded this, as a result, I am, I am deeply sorry and apologetic to Heavenly Parent. Considering that Heavenly Parent has worked for thousands of years to embrace humanity as his children, the 60 years spent in such an unsupported environment may seem like a long time. But from the perspective of his providence, it may also be considered short. However, the human body has limitations, and since the long-awaited dream of our heavenly parent can only be realized through true parents, I apologize to heaven that it has taken so long. When I heard these words, these bolded words, as a result, I am deeply sorry and apologetic to heavenly parent. I apologize to heaven that it has taken so long. Honestly, it was like, it was like in loop in my head, I went to sleep thinking about this, and I'm thinking, how is true mother? True mother, true parents have done so much. She's saying she's sorry and apologetic to heavenly parent. She's saying she's apologizing to heaven that has taken so long when it is our fault, right? True parents have done, worked, right, so tire, tirelessly. So then I thought, wow, what kind, of, what kind of a child of God are true parents that they are apologizing after working tirelessly to heaven, right, apologizing to heaven that they haven't done enough. And uh, honestly, I was flabbergasted. I was like, like I said, I couldn't sleep. It shook me to my core, and I thought about my own journey as a child of God, right? So much so that I can't even comprehend this level of filial piety towards, towards heavenly parent that I thought, wow, how inadequate am I as a child that this shocks me, you know? So then I started thinking, also, how much I appreciate True Mother, right? She's worked so hard, right? And we are living at the same time as our true parents, as such a divine daughter of Heavenly Parent that she's apologizing, right? And it makes sense to me now, right? We talk about True Mother as this God's only begotten daughter. And a lot of people actually struggle with this term, right? Oh, she's calling herself the only begotten daughter. This makes sense. What kind of level of child is she that she's apologizing for something 
when she's worked so hard, right? So then I started to do some digging. And then I found this from True Father, right? Her, be her, her equal half, right? It's not just True Mother. True Father is on this standard too, right? So I found this in the Chun Sung Gyung. Quote, if you compare yourself to me, then I am probably a more filial child of God than you are. Okay, that's true, right? The reason that I have lived my whole life in this way that God wants is I've lived my, life, my whole life in the way that God wants. Yet I would not even dream of assuming that I have fully carried out my filial obligations. In fact, I feel more inadequate with the passage of time. Whoa, right? I, I saw this, I was like, how does true father who has done so much feel in, more inadequate with the passage of time, right? That is just beyond. So I'll continue with this. When people think that they have fully discharged their duties of filial piety and loyalty, they actually cease to become filial children and patriots. The person who complains saying, I am a filial child, I am a patriot, why do you not recognize me, is the person who is retreating. You must understand that heaven's filial child and heaven's patriot is the person who realize, realizes as time goes on how much more of his filial duty remains to be fulfilled. He then renews his commitment and goal to fulfill his filial duty as his life's philosophy. Okay? Yes. So for me, it was like, this was like, hit me like a, an arrow. Wow, I'm very immature, right? I am, I am not even close. I can't even comprehend the level of this, how, how close to God, right, true parents must be and how much in resonance they must be with God that they feel inadequate as time goes on. Sorry, I was crying, sir. It's awful. Um, so then I started thinking about pledge point number two, um, which has this title, right? Divine sons and daughters. So from the family pledge to our family, the owner of Chenil Guk, pledges to represent and become central to heaven and earth by attending the heavenly parent and true parents. We pledge to perfect the dutiful family way of filial sons and daughters in our family, patriots in our nation, saints in the world, and divine sons and daughters in heaven and on earth by centering our true love. Right? We can right. We can say this on loop all day, right? How many, I've been in the church since I was born. How many times have I said this, right? And I say this on loop. And actually, me and my husband, we say one a day, but then we do the on shield. This one was the one from this morning, which made me think extra hard, right, about this sermon. But we're promising this, right? We're promising as, as individuals and as families, every time we read this, we are promising to perfect the dutiful family way of filial sons and daughters in our family, patriots in our nation, saints in the world, and divine sons and daughters in heaven and on earth, right? We are pledging that. So then I started thinking, these are, there are four kind of distinct stages here, right? We have in our family, filial children, patriots in our nation, saints in the world, and then divine sons and daughters. So for me, actually, yeah, I... Yeah, it's, I wanted to see what each of those kind of encompassed, right? Logically, it makes sense, right? Yeah, you'd be a good daughter in your family, right? Obey your parents, okay? And then, like, live for the sake of your nation, right? Think about the world, divine sin, right? Logically, we can repeat that. That makes sense, right? But for me, I wanted to see what really this means. Sorry, there's a lot of quotes here because, like I said, it's the process of me kind of digging through this and finding out more um, about this. How do we grow into the next stage, right, of just being filial children in our family and then moving on to the nation, moving on to the world, and then being at the level that we see our true parents, which is like out of my comprehension, right? So this is also from the Chun Sung Young. People become filial children only by sacrificing themselves for their families. Okay, I get that, right, logical. Further, in order to become patriots, people must be willing to sacrifice their entire families in order to save their nation. Only in this way can they become patriots. Saints are people who are willing to sacrifice their country in order to save the world. Divine children, so this is the last stage, must be willing to sacrifice the world in order to realize God's nation and land the kingdom of heaven on earth. Humankind has been ignorant of this truth. You need to invest and sacrifice yourselves. If not, then the ideal of one world or one country will never be accomplished. What is True Mother asking of us recently, right? One, right? She's, one, she's looking at heavenly unified Korea, right? 
Look at the bottom line here. If not, then the ideal of one world or one country will never be accomplished, right? We have to, each individual has to go through these four stages, right? And like I said, logically, this makes sense to me. But do I really embody this, right? And do I, if I think of all of the historical predecessors to me, for me, I don't know, those who are under, I'm looking at a few of the younger children. For me, when I grew up, I always resonated with this picture or this Bible story, right? Of Abraham offering his child, right? Wanting to offer Isaac, right? And I thought, if I was Isaac, would I be able to allow my father to do that to me? And honestly, this was like when I was younger, thinking about this at that age. Do I have more in me to sacrifice even more than Isaac? Am I at the level, and I feel, honestly, I feel so inadequate having gone through this, reading these, I feel so inadequate. Um, and so ashamed that I'm, I, I'm not even at the level of somebody who's come before me, you know? But yeah, True Mother is asking us, really, right, to, for one heavenly unified Korea, and how we accomplish that, right, is totally investing and totally sacrificing ourselves at each of these stages. So for me, actually, the hardest to grasp, I can kind of say, yes, I'll serve my parents. Yes, I'll serve my nation. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, I'll share the world. But for me, the hardest to grasp was this last, what is, what is the difference between a saint and a divine son and daughter of heavenly parent, right? What is the difference, right? Aren't we working to save the world? If you tell people that you're, you know, what is the Unification Church about? Oh, we're trying to save the world, right? Yeah, but look, right, the four saints, when we look at Confucius, Socrates, Jesus, Buddha, right, the four great saints, Jesus was a saint. What's the difference between, if Jesus was a saint, what's the difference between a divine son and daughter of God, right? That is like next level to me. And then I read this quote. I'm not going to read the, the first part, but I'll read the second part just for time. When you are centered on God, who is the center of the universe, then you will want to embrace heaven and earth with love, the desire that all the beings in the universe become eligible to receive God's love, right? Embrace heaven and earth. So saints were thinking about the world. How do you become a divine son and daughter? You have to transcend that and think about the spiritual world as well. And then, sorry, this is like me going, having like a, I was like mind blown. So then I read this next part. Since I love God from this position, I transcend history and worry about the spiritual world. If someone who can transcend time and space, right, I'm a physicist, this is crazy, and worry about affairs of the spiritual world, of the earth, and of God with love, he would be the kind of person God desires. Our Unification Church gives the name Holy Sons and Daughters to this kind of person. There is nothing left behind there. It's not the, just the world. It's the spirit world. It's God, right? It's, it encompasses everything, right? So this really, this quote clarified a lot for me. That divine sons and daughters is worrying about everything, right? It's worrying about God himself, right? And we can see this when we read True Parents' words, when we hear True Mother talk, that she, her focus is beyond just those in the room, right? She's probably talking to those in the spiritual realm, our ancestors who are present with us. She's worried about every last corner, right? And God himself, or her, him herself, right? Which is crazy. So like I said, this has just been a process of me yeah, going through this and realizing how inadequate I am as a child of God. How can I reach this level of a divine son and daughter that far surpasses even that of saints? Yeah, so a picture of two parents, like I said. So I want to tell you a story, or more like a, yeah, story. So I met, this is a true story, this is my friend. Um, this is not a real picture of my friend, but uh, my friend and I met at a play group, and our children, my son and her son, were the same age, about 13 months, so they were walking, little babies, right? And her son, now I've known her for five years, our children are five. Throughout that five years, her, ch her son has grown up without the ability to speak. So he, he cannot speak, right? 
it's difficult for his lips to physically make the motion. He knows what he wants to say, but he cannot communicate, right? And recently they found out not only does he have speech issues, he has autism as well, right? So it's like a, it's crazy. And I remember talking to her, you know, you can see as my son, you know, is speaking to me, I'm having these conversations, and then there's nothing there. And more recently I talked to her and I said, she just broke down in tears and she said, it is so difficult for me. It is so difficult. It's like having a nine month old again and again and again. Over those five years, I've invested so much and my son cannot even say I love you to you. And then I thought about, you know, we have this process to go through filial children in our families, patriots in our nation, saints in the world, divine sons and daughters. That's a process. Just like this boy has his process of learning to speak. God must be in such agony looking at us stuck in that one position, you know, like her. She can, does not that she doesn't love him. She loves him tremendously. But that love, you keep giving and giving and giving and there's no, you know, she wants him to grow to the way he was made to grow, right? To have the interaction. How much agony is true parent, heavenly parent in when he sees us stuck in the, that development? We can't even go look beyond our family. We can't even look beyond our world, right? You know, our, our nation, our peoples, our race. How much agony does that bring to God when he looks at each of us? And I'm not all in my, develop, my spiritual developmental stage where I should be. Okay, right? That's for one individual. What about all 7 billion, 7 billion people on the earth? What about all those who went to the spiritual world? Such difficulty. God must be in such pain. All of his children, right? Not one. keeps giving birth to people, right? And then they get stuck in this stage. Do we understand the value of true parents? True parents have said, I will take responsibility for that, for everything. Sorry. I will take responsibility for everyone on the earth, right? Everyone in the spiritual realm who has passed away. I will take responsibility for you, God. Honestly, if we think, I, I, it's like the tip of the iceberg. I do not understand true, the value of true parents at all. So how can we grow out of this stage, right? The stage that we're stuck in. The path to becoming a filial child is simple. You must want to take responsibility for the things that cause your parents to suffer. This is the way to become a filial child. Do we understand what God hopes for everybody on earth and in the spiritual realm? Do we understand what situation Heavenly Parent is in right now, looking at all of the, you know? Do we understand his heart and wanting to get everybody back? How can we be filial children if we don't understand that? I am causing my parents to suffer. Right? We must take responsibility for the things that cause your parents to suffer. I am that child stuck not knowing how to speak. I am that child. I have to take responsibility for that. I have to look around. I have to take responsibility for my brothers and my sisters who cannot speak. As I drove here, 45 minutes of driving, I was looking, going through different kind of areas, looking at all the people. Who's going to take responsibility for the people in Thornton Heath, right? The people in the greater areas here. These are people stuck, right? We're all children stuck in our developmental stage. Who is going to take responsibility? Who is going to take responsibility for our ancestors, right? Chumbo, Chumbo Victors. I understand True Mother. True Mother is saying, take responsibility for that spirit. The, you know, your ancestors, your, that spiritual realm, and also here on earth, the physical, it's both. That's how we can become a divine son or daughter, right? 
Chumbo, right, that's true mother's direction is to become chumbo victors like that. Take responsibility for your tribe. We have to, but we have to obviously want to take responsibility for those things. And yeah, just looking at people is one thing, but there's so much more that cause our, you know, causes our heavenly parent and true parents to really suffer that we don't know about. So yeah, but the title of my sermon was Growing Into the Next Stage, right? So we had these four stages, filial child in our family, patriot in our nation, saint in the world, divine sons and daughters. I want you to take 10 seconds, is there a, 10 seconds to just think about what level of child you are here. Do you care about your parents? Do you care about your siblings in your immediate family? Or you couldn't be bothered, right? Do you care about Boris Johnson in the UK? Do you care about all the low areas, high income areas in the, in the UK? Do you care about the world? Okay, we talk about Ukraine. There are a myriad of areas in the world which are crazy. The, the lowest of the low situation, you think of it, it's there. Do we care about that on a day-to-day basis? Do we resonate with God's heart when he looks at that? And then, right, divine sons and daughter. Even can we sa- be, be willing to sacrifice the world for heaven and earth, right, to, to see God and his hope come to a realization. To be honest, I, I'm, I'm minus. I'm, I'm minus in that. And if we were all divine sons and daughters, then this room would be filled with all of the people, right, from other areas, right? We would have new people coming all the time if we really were at this level where we care about deeply care about the suffering of other people, which is causing our heavenly parent to suffer, right? We would be wanting new people to come all the time. And like I said, I'm 100% guilty, 100, you know, 100% guilty of this. So for me, it was like this process is renewing my determination, right? You can't just get stuck, I'm inadequate. Okay, what do you do about it? We're all in, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves. Yes, I'm minus. What can I do? to take responsibility and to move forward with determination. That's, that's what we have to think about. How can we move forward? The time is now, right? The time for us to become God's filial children will not always be there. It will not exist in the spirit world after our death. We have to confirm our status as the children whom God absolutely needs, and we must accomplish this within our lifetime on earth. Okay, not only that, there's a time crunch, right? That's That's... Pressing too. We have to become God's filial children, divine sons and daughters on earth, right? And if I look back at the last decade, I've lived in the UK for a decade. How many regrets do I have? How many people have I brought to church? How many people know about the divine principle? How many people have I blessed? Right? I have so many regrets, even in that decade, right? We have to make a determination with the time that we have left to really make the best use. And True Mother gives us a timeline. True Mother has a timeline, right? 20, May 5th, 2023, offering the Chun Wangung. Then 20, 2027, right? Heavenly Unified Korea, right? Yeah, right? It's a blink of an eye. So I hope that we can make a determination without regrets to really move forward as quickly, uh, yeah, as quickly as we can. And the last thing I wanted to present was Another, it's like, you know, lots of people were in Korea. True Mother was speaking quite a lot. This was from the day before, that first quote. So the quote that hit me like an arrow, this is from the day before. This is at the blessing. This is a prayer that she's offering while blessing. Please trust us now, Heavenly Parent. We hope that you will rejoice to see our determination and active efforts to become one with True Mother, the only begotten daughter, and to become sons and daughters in proud, blessed families, who fulfill your dreams and the hope of humankind. Please trust us now, right? Don't trust us in 10 years. Trust us now. We hope that you will rejoice to see our determination, right? We are inadequate. We are stuck, but we will determine to move forward, to unify with our true mother at this time, to make an active effort, to really make sure that we can do our best, right? Live without regrets. So I don't know about you, but for me, I, 
I needed to reflect on all of these points. That was something that, like I said, I got struck. It, you know, when you feel like shame, you read something, but you know, it's like shows you all of your flaws. That's how I felt when I first read that quote, right? When I, when I looked at a slim, you know, glimpse of how much our true parents are, you know, how close they are to our heavenly parent and how inadequate I am compared to that. So I hope this wasn't too heavy. Sorry, I really apologize, always crying. Um, but I hope that we can make a determination. I make a determination here, standing here before you, to really push forward um, with true mother's direction, true, true parents' direction. Thank you so much. and have a few moments of uh, silent reflection on that.